All right, Nick, uh, day one, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we, this is our first day of our uh, Watches and Wonders vlog. We are here. We are just going to go over some of the stuff we saw today. It was a pretty relaxed day. Yeah. Nice. We eased our way into it. Nick's um, EA, on his... PA, calendar manager. Correct. Not doing a great job so far, but <laughs> nothing's new there, so that's okay. Um, more excited than a nine-year-old at Christmas. That's it. It's, uh, I mean, yeah, I've honestly, to be, yeah, to be frank, probably wanted to go to something like this, either Basel World or Watches and Wonders or SHH for maybe five years. And yeah. this is the first time I've ever had the opportunity, so. Well, it's good to have you here. It's incredible. It's uh, a real thrill. Like, just to be, I mean, look around. It's, you know, the biggest watch brands in the world. Got the Hodinkee guys just here. Got the Hodinkee guys just there. I mean, We've it's. Got, Every, you what know, else we see today? The what, who, we saw Watch Anish. Watch Anish, George Bamford, George Bamford yeah. Matt Haranik, yeah. Ronnie Madvani. Yep. Um, yeah, it's, yeah it's everybody. Who's who today? Um, indeed. So we just thought we'd go over today what we did. We shot some, you know, some content of. Um, yep. we, we saw two brands today officially. Two main brands. Um, and we sort of just got the lie of the land. Uh, we checked out this sort of this area which has Rolex, and just behind us is Patek here. Um, there's also another down the other end of the corridor, yeah. a huge section with all the Richemont brands. Yep. So IWC, Cartier, Jaeger Lacools, yeah, uh, it's, Langer. It's crazy. Uh, Vacheron. Yeah, Vacheron. Uh, and then in this side, we've got sort of an independent section. So in we, middle, we yeah. started the day by checking out the independent section, had a quick look around um, a bunch of, I guess they're, they're not necessarily young brands, but um, they're niche. Um, small, smaller brands, uh, niche manufacturers, and um, hopefully the small conversation going on behind us isn't <laughs> ruining the audio. Uh, we'll see how we go. But yeah, so that's basically uh, how it's kind of laid out here. Um, we arrived, got our accreditation, and the first meeting was with... With Grand Seiko. It's on um, both of our wrists, which and is And both handy. of us own and wear Grand Seiko. Uh, we saw some really exciting releases from Grand Seiko. Um, <laughs> Look, I mean, they're, they're going for this new design direction, which which came in with White Birch. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, look, the case is a bit more refined from 44GS, which is on my wrist now. Yeah. Um, we, we see a new bracelet. Yeah. Um, so we saw some new divers today. We did indeed. Uh, lots of titanium, which is crazy that the weight, how they look compared to how they feel in the hand is honestly incredible. Absolutely. Um, like, you've got a 44 millimeter watch that... I don't know. It's almost like nothing on your wrist. It's quite incredible. Oh, so I think it was, was 45.2. 45.2, that's it. It was <laughs> a very specifically uh, Japanese accuracy in full force. Um, but there were two new kind of sporty GMTs yep. with steel bezels. With steel bezels. Uh, a sort of a flat black dial and a, and a, and a creamy white, which was uh, Almost inspired by flake -esque. Misty Mornings. Misty Mornings, apparently, which is something that you've got to love about Grand Seiko. Every dial design has, yeah. detail is inspired by some sort of natural feature. Um, and then there was a similar case, uh, and also made in titanium, and it's a dive watch, yeah. um, 200 meters water resistance, spring drive, ceramic bezel, and the dial is honestly one of the more impressive things I think yeah. I remember seeing. It's, it looks like a high, like a high res photo, but it's been. It's, that, a it's like a it was, high res photo. It was of, like compacted. Yeah, a high res photo of like sort of a rippling waves. Ocean, yeah. And, but it was flat. In, in real life, it was it was pretty incredible. Um, obviously, with a ratcheting dive clasp as well, so yeah. a bit practical I'll there. Um, and then some more sort of boutique edition, limited to seven hundred pieces. Yes, we did. Um, yeah, oily GMT. blue at GMT Chronos. Chrono, which was also sick yeah. um, and crazy light again. Yeah. Um, and then with that, um, the black, the black as well, which is correct. a non limited edition. And then of course we saw some watches that. And for, we didn't get hands on with them today, but we saw yep. the Constant Force Tourbillon, which is it's a absolutely watch, crazy. It's absolutely crazy. It's an entirely, I don't know, I was, I was speaking to the um, the Grand Seiko brand manager and he agreed it was almost the, the start of a new chapter for the brand. It's um, incredibly contemporary, you know, effective. It's very avant-garde. Um, they released the, you know, the specs of the movement last year. Everyone was wondering, you know, what's the watch actually going to look like when it's all cased up? And we got a case that was a blend of titanium and platinum. Yeah. So, pr 
precious but also kind of practical and lightweight. Yeah, with um, their mad, with their hollowed lugs. Yeah, yeah, so it's kind of sculpted out lugs. Um, and yeah, just this sort of incredibly complex, I don't know, almost reminded but, me of Richard Mille or yeah, something like that. Yeah, but super well balanced. Yeah, yeah, um, kind of skeletonized, constant force tourbillon with, uh, you know, large tourbillon down at six o'clock and, um, you know, then the, the time telling hour and minute hands up at, at 12 o'clock. I think they had a little um, power reserve indicator at about eight o'clock. Yeah, but we didn't, so we didn't get hands on with that one today. We no. are going to see that tomorrow. We are. Uh, that is limited to twenty pieces, three hundred seventy thousand euro. Five hundred thousand That's a half a million dollar watch. Dollars. That's big bucks. That's a sort of territory the Grand Seiko has not really played in before. Yeah, agree. Um, so. But the Lion on the other side, semi precious, which you know had a lot of stones in it. Yeah. Certainly a different beast, but also uh, very different a bit beast. of fun. Exactly, and that's almost a bit more uh, reminiscent of vintage Grand Seiko with kind of very flat uh, Zeratsu polished case lines. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, that was Grand Seiko, and then um, what did we do? We, we went on. Yeah, we went and had a bit of lunch with uh, JLC, and we had a bit of a look around a bunch of different Brands. players. Yeah, uh, Langer, IWC have a really great. Um, set up that we are going to spend some time in tomorrow and we're going to yep. see some watches. Yep. Uh, we pretty much checked out everything. Um, yeah, and then we had a bit of a extracurricular activity out of the Palexpo Watches and Wonders set up. And yeah, we and we went saw... to see, I mean, we've been doing some work on the website with Gucci, um, you know, last year and we went to an incredible, absolutely incredible home, uh, just set back from Lake Geneva. Um, Home was, is underselling it. it yeah, was, it was. It was a compound. It was a property. It was an estate. Exactly. Yeah. It was. You know, we were driving down the road alongside Lake Geneva. On one side is you know tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars worth of property and of consulates, consulates, and, and embassies. Yeah. And we were talking about how expensive it must be and how you know lovely the houses are. And then the car pulled into a house just on the other side of the road and then led up an enormous circular driveway. Anyway, we'll sub in some of the video that we've just taken because we, 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 were, we were pretty blown away. away. All right, Nick, Gucci are not a part of Watches and Wonders, but they're yeah, definitely organized doing their best some, to to be. <laughs> some extra. If we just look behind us, we've got the uh, Chinese consulate directly on Lake Geneva. Yeah, and there you go, straight through to the city there. Behind us, we've got Gucci's uh, it brand looks presentation. Like entirely freshly erected uh, yeah. uh, pavilion with one of the more gorgeous chalets behind it. So I'm just gonna let's just go for a quick. Let's walk. just have a quick little peekaboo. This is not good for my aim, Leon door shoes. No. Look at this house. Look at that house. I mean, <laughs> succession, anyone? Yeah. Well. Wow. Yeah. So they had a full sort of. Um, Almost like a little gazebos. A little atrium of some of the current product like and their 50 house. year anniversary of, of watchmaking. Yeah. And then we went up to the main house, which has been in the same uh, Swiss family for, you know, Hundreds generations. Of years. And of um, years. crazy, crazy stuff. And we looked at what uh, I'm, I was so impressed. Yeah. We saw some absolutely incredible watchmaking from Gucci. Um, crazy, crazy in uh, technical capacity, crazy yeah. in. Uh, rarity crazy and I mean it wasn't too crazy in price really when you think about what was being made when you think about you know constant force tourbillons at half a million dollars and these are not as expensive I guess yeah. which you know it's obviously what was that 220 two for the two I think different so there was effectively a collection called planetarium which had three watches which we've just put on the IG so check out um, the yeah, stories if yeah. you can um, so three different colors and depending on the color of the stones it was either a hundred and 95 to 240,000 euros. Yeah. So, don't know what that's working out in Aussie dollars. It's obviously still a huge amount of money, but in terms of the, you know, the gem selection, the stone cutting, in terms of making sure that all of the gems are exactly the same color, color weight. clarity, weight, yeah. um, and also the tolerances to make that type of watch with a kind of enormous tourbillon in the, in the center of the watch. Yeah. With hands that kind of pass over. I mean, the hands were inconsequential. Stones. You couldn't even see them. And we were right. just having a laugh before and really like, 
you know, you couldn't read the hands, but yeah. time does not matter to people who can no. afford to buy this watch. Exactly. As James said, if you can afford to buy this watch, you don't need to tell the time because... Somebody does it for you. <laughs> <laughs> You're paying on somebody. The, the driver does it on their, uh, <laughs> on their iWatch. On their Casio, yeah. Um, yeah. So, look, we were just talking about fun before, and honestly, um, they they did not half ass a single thing from the house to the incredible two minute video that they produced yeah. uh, to sort we'll of explain the watches. Yeah, we might a sub bit a bit in, yeah. -roll. It and, was um, like a Hollywood level CGI production. Yeah, like, it was insane. So, so eight, months, eight months to put it together, this two minute video. Yeah. Uh, and they were just saying like, watch, watches should be about having some fun mm -hmm. and they have firmly cemented themselves as uh, a serious contender in, um, in hot horology. Hot horology. Hot, uh, yeah, Which so. is refreshing because like, yeah. Oh, okay. well, so we'd love one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, this is one of yeah, a few glasses of PJ we've drunk today. Um, Merci. Thank you for that. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Yeah, and uh, look, it, they, they were a bit of fun, weren't they? And we've, we finished by looking at the Gucci grip. A watch that both Nick and I think is hilarious. Uh, really I just great love it. Fun. It's just fun. It's it's unusual. It's a, a, a different way of communicating the time rather than just hands. Yeah. Um, and it's just fun. And yeah, it's and also know, matching that. That's I mean, coloured sapphire cases totally. with with plastic with rubber, rubber straps. straps that are they've literally nailed the colour yeah. matching to the sapphire. Incredible. Yeah. Honestly, and we were both. I was blown away. I, I was, was really impressed. Very, very impressed. I knew that Gucci was pushing hard because they were, pardon me, they were releasing, um, you know, they released last year, I think, their 25 hour Tourbillon yeah. uh, collection, which is obviously, you know, getting up there in price, I think, approaching well, in, in the six figure range. So it's a lot more serious. I than think it was 120 and 150, but we had yellow gold and platinum i think the platinum was 150. yeah um and then we saw the skeleton stuff on the rubber which drops the price a little bit because we're yeah, using bracelet. less bracelet correct yeah. Yeah. um but still no and and in the context of you know the storied halls of patek philippe and rolex and the seriousness of watchmaking which you know obviously should be respected it's an incredibly proud tradition especially within switzerland but yeah it's good to have a bit of fun with it and Gucci is really they nailed it they absolutely fucking nailed it yeah, yeah. Uh, it was really good to see yeah um also in that atrium we saw the 25h the new automatic yeah which uses a colored glass that you know yeah. makes it look like the dial's colored that and it was crazy really depending cool. on the angle it's almost like the those uh custom paint jobs you see on supercars where depending on the color of the oh, the angle of the light yeah, the, the chameleon color. paint yeah, yeah the chameleon paint it was like you know you look at it one angle it looks pink you look at another angle it looks blue um, a bit of teal there was a lot yeah, yeah. and then the aluminium watches and, aluminium. and that collection is eight grand eight grand for yeah. a watch in-house caliber in-house caliber super thin micro rotor super thin seven mil thick with a micro rotor which you know to get i don't know what the comparison might be bulgari octofinissimo perhaps and that's 16 i think yeah um and the quartz ones are 3k i believe I think it was two two or three k two, between two and three which is crazy cash. yeah so they've got extremely compelling offerings not just at the very very high end yeah um, but also at the low end which i think is yeah, it's it's sensible watchmaking from Gucci. It's fun watchmaking, and it's just kind of exciting to see a new player who is messing around. They want to get involved, and they're they're not really holding yeah. back. And then I think maybe we should just finish. Like Rolex is behind us. We've had a quick look at the Rolex releases today. I personally think it's all just a bit of hocus pocus. <laughs> Uh, look, fair, you're, fair. And, uh, but you, you are left-handed. I'm left-handed. You don't mind Destro, I as, think. Uh, like... As you might know, the main headline for Rolex this year was the left-handed GMT Master with the green and black. I think its nickname is the Pepsi already. Oh, okay. Not the Pepsi, sorry, the uh, Sprite. Sprite. Yeah, Sprite. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, so it was a left-handed, compelling, I think it's cool. The Yacht Master was, was nice. Yeah, yeah, so they released with two it. new Yacht Masters that were also quite nice with um, one in yellow gold and another one with a stone... Uh, Falcon's Eye Stone, I yeah, believe it's yeah. called, Dial, which was really, really beautiful. Um, and a few other bits and pieces, but I don't know. It's funny, I heard some chaps talking about it in the press room just then, and they're like, what do we say? It's just yeah, another new colour. Another new colour. Know, the Air King has been slightly refined. It's not updated. different. The Air King's effectively identical, other yeah. than apparently Crown, well, Crown 
Vanguard, I believe, mm. and, a, um, and a new movement. So the update is invisible. Um, the, uh, and then yeah, just behind us, and we tried to set it up in front of the Batek Philippe, but the, it was flashing with the. We saw a couple of new Bateks, um, very a cool lovely Batek. new world timer which has Australia on it, which is Absolutely. really cool. Yeah, yeah. So the new world timer from Batek, uh, I think it's a thirty-nine and yeah. also a forty-one. Um, and a new annual, annual calendar, perpetual annual calendar um, in the salmon, sort of the Calatrava, and there's new Calatrava yeah. that looks there almost. Um, Field watch. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And an, and an annual calendar version of that as well, with a kind of grainy dial, kind of a clue de uh, texture on the mm. sides of the case. So, yeah, cool stuff from Protec. Much um, to everyone's disappointment, no new Nautilus. No new Nautilus, um, unfortunately. I guess they're going to let that just simmer out and maybe hit that next year. So. Yeah. Well, they need, I don't know. They've they got to shift the take, bit, don't take they? the iron out of the fire for I a agree. while. I think yeah, it's yeah. a bit it's a bit too hot for anybody's liking. Um, but yeah, some really cool stuff. Um, just even wandering around. I mean, I just love watches. I just love <laughs> I just love I just love being <laughs> I able love to talking see. about watches. I just love talking about watches. I was God, it's good just to talk about watches for eight hours. I in just a said row to James in the car, I was like, it doesn't happen very often, but that's yeah. why it's so good when you can talk about watches for eight hours it a day is. and it's fucking brilliant. So um, yeah, we saw a, a probably a highlight for me from Protect was a um, we'll maybe chuck a little bit of B-roll over this, but a Aquanaut with an entirely baguette set dial. Absolutely mind blowing. Oh, stuff. yeah, that was I nice, don't know yeah. how many carats of diamonds is in that dial, but they weren't playing around with that one. So they were not. Yeah, there's honestly hundred. There's a, there'd be hundreds of million dollars worth of watches in this hall. Hundreds of millions, and they've and and not just within the brands and on the wrists of the uh, you know the VIP clients or the you know the brand managers or the journalists, but also they've got um, a couple of little sort of multi-brand exhibitions. So well, that, was, yeah, the history of time. Yeah, what, yeah there was time a, a or... design-focused one yeah. that had um, Gerald Genta, who designed and it, uh, designed the, the shape of the Nautilus. And the, the AP um, Royal Oak. And the uh, Automatic A Royal Oak. And the Ingenieur. And the Ingenieur, and the Cartier Pasha. Correct. And the, you know, he's done pretty much everything. Uh, but his personal Royal Oak was on display here. I don't know how much that went for, but uh, yeah, crazy. Not small bucks. So, um, so tomorrow we've got uh, we're seeing a bunch more brands. So we'll sort of go over um, you know the releases, the specific pieces that we saw, and uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed. Go again from here. Enjoy day for one watching. of our uh, vlog, and uh, Johnny Mac is probably going to edit this one. So enjoy, Johnny. <laughs> and if you have any questions or you want to see something on Instagram. Specific, yeah, yeah, if there are any watches you want to see, if, if you want a video of see, anything, um, anyone you want us to talk to, yeah. any you know watch people that you've seen might be in the, in the Watches and Wonders uh, exhibition here over the next week. We'll try and pull some people aside. We'll try and track them down. We'll try and have a chat. So let us know who you want us to hear talk to. Um, let us know the watches you want us to see, uh, to have a look at. Yeah, we'll and, try to um, send you some wrist rolls or some photos or whatever we can. That's what we're here for. So let us know what up. you want. And um, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Uh, How good? How good. Nice. I wonder how long that was.